So how do we turn these numbers into degrees? Well, I would use proportional reasoning, right? The first thing I would do is add up all of the runners over all the days because I want to figure out what fraction of runners run on each day. And that fraction will allow me to turn this into degrees. So the first thing I want to do is add up these numbers. What do we get? Well, here, I, I'm just going to skip around and add. 20 and 80 is 100. 60 and 40 is 100. And then we have 200, 300, 400. So that means we have, over the course of this week, 600 runners, right? And 60 goes into 600 very nicely. So let's start with that. So 60 out of 600, if we reduce that, of course, that's like 1 over 10, because 60 times 10 is 600. So 1 tenth is our fraction. We want to rewrite that out of 360, right? Because a circle has 360 degrees. So we're trying to figure out what is 1 tenth in terms of a circle. So we can solve for this. 10 goes into 360 36 times. So that means 1 times 36 is x. And that's our number of degrees. What's 1 times 36? Well, that's just 36 degrees. And that's a great building block, right? This, on Thursday, we have a 36 degree angle. And notice that helps me a lot because I can next think about Tuesday. Without doing any more calculations, I know that there are twice as many runners on Tuesday, so there should be twice as many degrees, or 72 degrees. And I can keep going because now, to get to Wednesday, I add another group of 60. This is three groups of 60 on Wednesday, so it's three groups of 36 degrees. And what's that? Let's write over here, 36 times 3. Well, 3 times 3 is 90. 3 times 6 is 18. Put them together, right? We get 108 degrees. And now, right, I could simply solve the last one by subtracting um, this sum from 360, but also I notice that Monday has twice as many runners as Tuesday. So it'll have twice the degrees on the circle graph. Now we should just quick check, add these up, see if it adds to 360. So we add up, right, the way I like to add this up is by groups. So what do I do? Well, I know that 8 plus 72 is 80. I know they're just stacking up and adding. It might be faster, but this is how I like to add 36 and 44. What's that? Well, 30 and 40 is 70, right? 6 and 4 is 10, so it's another 80. And then we have 1, 200. So if I add these up, 200 and 80 and 80, or 200 and 160, that's 360 degrees. So I know I didn't miss anything here. So the first thing I would do is I'll use a ruler or a protractor to draw a line that starts your first angle measure. So I'll draw a line here from the center to the circle. And then I'll measure out one of the angles. To do that, uh, just line up your protractor here on the center of the circle. I'm going to use the outer track of numbers because my angle is opening and the outer track is getting larger, 10, 20, 30, and 40, and so forth. As I go along, the inner track here, the numbers are going counting down 180, 170, 160. But since I'm opening this way, let's use the outer track because the numbers are increasing with the way I'm opening the angle. And then just mark a line, right, a dot, excuse me, at 36. Right here's 30, 35, little hash mark, 36. The next step is just to line up your protractor and connect the dots. That's it. So take this protractor. I can turn it a little bit. I think I can make this work. Right, your protractor, I think, will be even much easier to move around than this thing because all you have to do is line up the bottom like a ruler and connect right, the center to that dot. I'm not going to use this tool, though. It's getting frustrating here. So what I'll do is I'll just use a line tool. You'll, of course, have a ruler. Um, if you connect the line all the way, it's probably what to do, and then erase the difference, you get a great approximation of your angle. So here, label it, that's 36 degrees. Next, we have 72 degrees. It's double the size of 36. So if I drag this protractor back over, the key is now, right, to line it up with the last line you drew. Right? You want it to line up perfectly with that. That's how this goes on a, on a circle graph. You're always building on the last line you drew. So there we go. This is rather difficult to use. There we go. Okay, so now the next angle is 72 degrees. Again, but now you're building off this line. Open up 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and then 2. About there. 
Same principle, you would then use the, either the bottom of the protractor or a ruler to connect, oops, to connect your center point to that dot. But again, I have a line tool here. You have a ruler, you would draw a line like this and then erase the difference. That gives you a great approximation. So 72 degrees goes here. Now there are two angles left, but I'm gonna draw the 108, not the 144, because you only need to draw one of them, right? The remaining space will be the last angle, and then you're done. So here, we line up our protractor one last time. There's the center. Turn the protractor, then rotate nicely, until it lines up with the last line you drew, and make sure you're basically centered on the circle. So now, as we read, we're going 10, 20, all the way up to 108. So about here, right? And then we just, again, for one last time, take your ruler or whatever, and then connect the center of the circle to that dot, and erase the difference, right? Bring it back there. And this is 108 degrees. Right? It's an approximation. Now the remaining space will be 144. And you also, if you're taking a test, I always advise you to then, of course, write in what each of these represent. Here's Monday, here's Wednesday, here's Tuesday, and here's Thursday.